You guys, I'm heartbroken. Today is Monday, the day after Sunday Night Football. The Philadelphia Eagles managed to beat the Dallas Cowboys 23-9. That's a 14-point differential, two touchdowns. But I got to be honest, it's really hard for me to remain optimistic and supportive. You know what? Let me rephrase that. I'm going to always support the Philadelphia Eagles. I'm for the logo more than anything. I'm for the brand more than anything. I'm for the culture more than anything. I'm for the city more than anything. But what I'm not for is mediocre quarterback play. What I'm not here for is mediocre play calling. What we're not here for is subpar play from our offense on a weekly basis. Time and time and time and time and time and time again, Carson Wentz is being knocked on his ass. Carson Wentz is winging the ball as if he has no idea where he wants to throw it. Time and time again, he's taking unnecessary risk. Time and time again, he's holding on to the football well, well longer than he should have. Time and time again, he can't hold on to the football. And time and time again, he's just making poor decisions. Doug Peterson, you're not alone. You're not, I ain't forget about you. Time and time again, Mr. Peterson, you are making ill-advised coaching decisions. When it comes to personnel, you decided to essentially move Melada who's beginning to find his rhythm in the left tackle spot. You decided to move Melada from the left tackle spot for the right tackle spot. And you decided to implement Jason Peters into the lineup. At this point, Jason Peters is washed. Jason Peters is washed. But that's not what this video is really about. This video is strictly and mainly about Carson Wentz and his relationship with Doug Peterson. Carson Wentz and Doug Peterson, I gotta be honest, they're starting to really tick me off, but more than anything, I'm starting to pay close attention to the details. I'm starting to see and understand the rift between Carson Wentz and Doug Peterson. If you ever notice, when Carson Wentz makes some mistakes, his, his coach isn't, isn't over there talking to him. Remind you, Doug Peterson isn't calling defensive plays. He's not calling anything on defense at all. So on, so so when the defense is on the field, he's just chilling for the most part. And if you notice on any other team, when their quarterback is really having a bad game like that, they go over there and talk to him, say, "Hey, what's going on in your head? Hey, what can we do to you know bring this game back into you know within reach? Hey, what can we do to make you more comfortable out there? What can we do? Hey, what are you seeing out there? Maybe you saw something I didn't see. Maybe I saw something you didn't see. There's none of that going on on the sideline. There's none of that." Doug Peterson and Carson Wentz are communicating on the sidelines candidly. You have Carson Wentz sitting next to Nate Sudfield as if Nate Sudfield is going to see something Wentz ain't. You got Nate Sudfield sitting on the bench next to Wentz going through the, going through the pictures and the playbooks and the schemes as if Nate Sudfield knows something that Wentz don't. As if, as, as, as if he has something to really bring to the table. If you want him to sit next to a quarterback picking his brain and trying to figure out what went wrong and what could go right. He needs to be sitting next to Josh McCown for one. A quarterback who has a mind, a brain, someone who has an actual football mind. Not taking nothing away from Nate Sudfield because he's done nothing wrong. But my thing is, Nate Sudfield is a layman compared to Carson Wentz. And that's saying a lot when you see how, Car how Carson Wentz has been playing. But Carson Wentz has not done himself any favors Doug Peterson and Carson Wentz's real relationship, in my opinion, is starting to become strained, if not already. I was listening to a radio conversation between Doug Peterson and I can't remember who he was talking to. I found out about it because I hopped on uh, Joey Shakes 72, his live. Shout out to Joey Shakes for the um for the breaking news, the breaking conversation with uh, Doug Peterson and the radio host. And the radio host didn't pull no punches. The radio host was like, Doug. We're watching the games. What's going on? 
He was asking hard questions. He was making, he was getting Doug a little irritated. And, and, and it is what it is. If you see how Doug has been conducting himself in these press conferences, he's clearly tired of answering certain questions, right? He's clearly tired of dealing with certain things that he's been dealing with. He knows for a fact he should not be dealing with these kind of turnovers. These kind of turnovers. Turnovers happen. But he knows for, he knows very damn well, Carson Wentz should not be turning the ball over the way he has been. You're five years into the league. Five years. You were an all-pro, second-team all-pro, I believe, at one point. If it wasn't for the injury, you'd be first-team all-pro, guaranteed MVP. But since that injury, you have not been the same man. You have not been the same player. I'm not questioning your commitment to the team. I'm not questioning questioning your toughness when it comes to getting hits. I'm not questioning your 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 mentality when it comes to taking risk when risks need to be taken. You know, I know for a fact when, it, when it's all said and done, Wentz is going to leave it all out there. But my thing is, Wentz, why do you continue to put yourself, why do you continue to put your team in situations that they don't have to be in? Your defense played significantly harder than they had to yesterday. They played way harder than they had to yesterday. Granted, the defense shut things down, shut them out in the second half. But let's be totally honest. Out of the nine points the Cowboys put up, six of those points came directly off of a Wentz turnover. So in all reality... If they got, if, if they managed to get two field goals off of two wins turnovers, can you imagine what we would have got if we never would have turned the ball over? Two of those turnovers, we were in field goal position. If you want to really think about the, if you, if you really want to think about the opportunities the Eagles had, the Eagles should have, the, the Eagles should have easily won that game. Easily should have won that game. I give them just to be generous. I'll say they should have won that game about thirty-eight to three. That game should have been a wash. Bernard Carson Wentz, you have a feeling, you have a you have a love or a knack to make things more interesting. The interesting thing about the dynamic between a quarterback and his head coach is the fact that when things go wrong, it's easy to point at the quarterback. But when things go terribly wrong, you're starting to look at the head coach, right? But the player is the talent. The player is the person that you're supposed to be grooming to understand and fit and execute your schemes and plays. So if he's not executing them, it's one of two things. He isn't capable or he doesn't believe in it. In my humble opinion, I don't think it's a capability thing. I don't think once believes in his playbook. I don't, I don't think once believes in Doug's play calling at this point. Let's be totally real. Doug decided to promote or hire a gentleman by the name of, what's the quarterback coach name? It's going to kill me. It's going to kill me. I, I'm, I'm, not, I'm, I'm not stopping this video until I find out a dude's name. I, I, I got to find out his name. I got to find out his name because my thing is when it comes to your starting quarterback, especially your, especially your franchise quarterback, the person that's training him, the person that's drawing up the schemes and plays should not be his peer. Press Taylor. Press Taylor. You press him with these whack plays, Press. They say Press Taylor is in charge of, he's the pass game coordinator. What are you coordinating? These plays, these routes are so pedestrian. It's ridiculous. Like I said, the relationship between a, a quarterback and his coaches is so significant. Your coaches are meant to hold you accountable. Your coaches are meant to coach you up when things aren't really going that well. They're, they're there to, to, to reel you back in when things are starting to get out of hand. But you know what's so sad about the whole dynamic of all this? Because I like Doug. I actually like Carson Wentz. But Carson Wentz is losing my trust. If not, he's lost it already. Doug Peterson, same thing. He's losing my trust. If not, he's lost it already. But you know what's sad, though? Like I said... The quarterback is the talent. The talent is your most valuable asset. So if things do go terribly wrong, like I was saying, the first person to go, if anyone is to go, will be Doug Peterson. Because we've seen what Wentz can do at his peak. If not, we haven't seen his peak, really. We've seen a microcosm of Wentz's supreme talent. That 2017 year. We've seen it. But that's a figment of the memory now. We have to move forward. And if we're going to move forward as an organization, 
as a team, if Wentz is going to move forward as a quarterback, he needs to have someone in there that's drawing up plays that he believes in, drawing up schemes that he believes in. It seems like Wentz is constantly trying to force the issue. But why? This is an eight-week progression or regression, for lack, you know, for lack of better terms. He has not improved. If anything, he's literally been up and down. He's been more down than up. And it's at a point now where once people are beginning to question if you are the guy, y'all was booed off that field going into halftime. Y'all was booed off the field. Booed. People were calling for Jalen Hurts. I personally don't think Jalen Hurts is ready to be thrown in there. It's not as simple as everyone makes it out to be. But Carson, in in your fifth year as an NFL pro quarterback, the mistakes, the decisions that you're making, you should not be making them. You should not. And like I said, if anyone's going to go first, because we're because because we're in this for the long haul, you guys. Wentz has a pretty big contract, and let's be totally real. If they do move on from him, we stuck with him until about 2022 at the earliest. At the earliest. I don't see them move, moving him unless they see what he can do outside of Doug Peterson's system. So if Doug Peterson isn't willing to get an offensive coordinator who's capable, then he will be out the door. Then Wentz will be under a new coaching staff, and then they will see how Wentz performs under that. Like I said, if things change, the quarterback, I'm sorry, the head coach is going to be the first one to go. It's straight like that. Straight like that. So... This is a make or break year for me because Doug Peterson has been constantly regressing each and every season as a play caller. And then he's just promoting in-house, bring in some fresh eyes, some fresh mind. Press Taylor, he's a baby. He knows nothing. No offense. He knows nothing. He doesn't know anything. Wentz doesn't respect him clearly. They can't, they, they can't, they, they can't motivate Wentz for some reason. They can't, they can't help change how he's been playing the game. They, they, they can't push his buttons. But you know who was able to push his buttons? Frank Reich. Filippo. You know what I'm saying? They was able to push his buttons. Listen, man. Finding that perfect marriage between quarterback and head coach is not easy to do. We thought we had it in 2017, but Wentz was derailed by injury. That was significant. I personally don't think he's been the same man, the same person since then. He has a lot of soul searching to do. And if this team is going to get anywhere... In the future. Because I'm tired of them saying there's no talent. I'm tired of them saying there's no tools for them to be successful. I'm tired of hearing that same narrative. It's false. It's a figment at this point. Alshon Jeffrey is done. Deshaun Jackson is done. Those are our past. This is our present. Travis Fulgham. Baller. Jalen Rager. Baller. John Hightower. Baller. Greg Ward. Mr. Reliable. Dallas Goddard. The future at tight end. Jordan Melata, The future at left tackle. You know what I'm saying? Jack Driscoll may be the future at right tackle or right guard. Herbig may be the future at left guard or right guard. You know what I'm saying? We still got to figure out our future at center in another guard position because Pryor is not really who I think he is. But this team, I'm tired of hearing we don't have the pieces. I'm tired of hearing that. I'm tired of hearing that. I'm looking at these young guys right now, and I'm like, oh, they have too much upside. They're doing what they're doing, and their quarterback is playing like shit. Like, come on. Like, come on. Excuse my language, because I like to keep this channel professional. But, dog, I get emotional about these guys. I get emotional about my Sixers. I get emotional about my Eagles. I support the Flyers and the Phillies as well. Don't get it twisted. I'm Philly, or I'm, I'm Philly versus everybody, but I'm but I'm a die-hard Eagles and Sixers fan, and I go hard for those guys. And my thing is, when I see mediocrity, I call it out like I see it. And once you've been playing mediocre from beginning to end, or from beginning to present, Doug Peterson, your play calling has been mediocre from beginning to present. The defense is getting better and better. It seems like we're starting. I feel like we're beginning. I feel like we're beginning to figure out the combination at linebacker. I feel like we're beginning to figure out a lot on defense. But my thing is, the offense is so stagnant. If the offense had any level of creativity, any level of just, just execution, we, would, we wouldn't be where we are. We wouldn't be where we are. Like, 
we wouldn't be, what is it, three, four, and one? We wouldn't be there. Wentz, step your weight up before you lose your job to this young blood, Jalen Hurts. Doug Peterson, step your weight up before you lose your job and your young gun Carson Wentz is being coached by somebody else, somebody that really know how to utilize, utilize the talent and get him up in the morning. Because right now, it don't seem like it's you. But that's all I have for you guys today. I'm your humble host, Tony the II. Once again, I'm so grateful that you guys are tuning in for more content. I'm just humble. You know, I'm so passionate about these Eagles, man. I'm so passionate about my sports. And, you know, it's, it's just sad when you see so much mediocrity at one time. You know, it's so hard to play, it's so hard to see the Eagles play a complete flawless football game. For the first time all season, that defense has played four quarters of ultimate football, and it was beautiful. The offense, step y'all weight up. Y'all was tuned in to chalk it up where no matter if we win or if we lose, we just gotta charge it to the game. One love, y'all. Fly Eagles fly.